Deep in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain. Deep in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. الحمد لله الذي خلق فسوى وقدر فهدى وأعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى الحمد لله الذي أضحك وأبكى وأمات وأحيا وأغنى وأقنى الحمد لله الذي شق البحار وأجر الأنهار الحمد لله الذي يكور النهار على الليل ويكور الليل على النهار الحمد لله الذي أنقذ من الجهالة وهدى من الضلالة وأنار الأبصار وأحيا القلوب والأبصار All praise belongs to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the exalted the one who created everything and made it perfect all praise belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted, the one who determined a measure for everything and guided it. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted, the one who makes whom he wills laugh and makes whom he wills weep and cry. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted, the one who causes death and gives life. All praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who proportionate wealth made some of us poor and some of us rich. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who made the night fold over the day and made the day fold over the night. The one who split the sea. The one who made the rivers flow and run. All praise belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who guided us from misguidance. The one who saved us from ignorance. The one who enlightened our chests and our hearts. And the one who revived our consciousness and our thoughts. Allahumma ya man ala al-arsh istawa. Ya man khalaqa wa fasawa. Ya man tara makanana wa tasma' kalamana. Wa ta'lamu sirrana wa alaniyatana. O Allah. The one who rose above the throne in a manner that suits your majesty, Subhanak. The one who sees where we are, the places where we are, and he sees us. The one who hears what we say. The one who knows what we reveal and what we conceal. We ask you by the virtue of your beautiful names and lofty attributes, for sincerity in all what we say, in all what we do, whether in the open or whether in public, we ask you to forgive our sins and our shortcomings. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Brothers and sisters in Islam What a great honor A great honor To be with you live On my beloved TV channel Huda TV At a time subhanallah when Huda TV actually went to the US. I know there are a lot of those who are watching the show from the United States. Do you know that you can watch Huda TV now 
on the free-to-air satellite called Galaxy 19. Just go to Huda TV website, www.huda.tv, to find out how you can do that. Of course, the brothers and sisters, the viewers who are watching us in Europe, Africa, Asia, I love you all for the sake of Allah. I'm no stranger to Huda TV screen. You've seen me before. But this time, I'm coming with a heavy load because of the subject. And I'm coming live for the first time. That throws a lot of weight on me. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make things easy on me. The show is called Aqeedah Matters. I want to tell you something. If you want to build a skyscraper for some of those who are not aware of what a skyscraper is, just look at the picture of New York, Manhattan. See this high rise building. I'm asking you, what do you need to do to make this happen? The higher you want to go up, the deeper you must dig down to have a foundation. If you do not have a solid, strong foundation, anything can make that skyscraper collapse. That foundation, once it comes to the religion of Islam, is called Aqeedah the belief system, Iman, other names are there too. This is why we called the show Aqeedah Matters, because the stronger your Aqeedah is, the stronger you are in your conviction and commitment to the religion of Islam. Brothers and sisters in, Is in Islam, dear viewers, this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started with it. And actually, uh, we decided to call this first episode. We decided to give it a title. Let's start from where they started. Who are they? the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they started with the Aqeedah. The Prophet ﷺ, when he started teaching them the religion of Islam, he started introducing to them concepts who Allah is, the names and the attributes of Allah, the Lordship, what Allah can do for you. Allah being the creator, the sustainer, the provider, the nourisher, the one who gives life and causes death. He built that. He built the Lordship. And then he instructed them to convict themselves to commit themselves to the deen. And because that foundation was solid, was strong, the result of the work of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was overwhelming the harvest. In 10 years after the death of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, to be accurate, who spent only two years after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In 10 years, a record time never happened in the history of humanity that a generation gets empowered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that time. Imagine the fountain of Islam was Medina. The state gradually took over two existing superpowers, became a rival. 
because that foundation was solid. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught his companions that when you want to invite people to Islam, talk to them about Islam, you better begin with that foundation, with the aqeedah, with the belief system, with la ilaha illallah, with tawheed. In both Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhumah narrates when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu anh to Yemen to teach them Islam. Look what he instructed him. Ya Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, إنك تأتي قوما أهل كتاب The land where you're going to is a land where Jews and Christians are living people of the book ليكن أول ما تدعوهم إليه لا إله إلا الله Let be the first thing you talk to them to is about Tawheed about Allah and this is the essence of aqeedah, the essence of the belief system, the foundation of the belief system, tawheed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ascribing unity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once it comes to his divine names, once it comes to his actions of lordship, once it comes to his names and attributes, and as a result of this, you will find the people themselves making the commitment, the conviction to Islam. Don't talk to a Christian or a Jew about not drinking, about not committing adultery. They will not understand why. You see, this is why Aisha, the mother of the believers, radiyallahu anha, Umm al -Mu'mineen, she got our attention to this. She said, when we were in Mecca, the first 13 years, we know Rasulullah Sallallahu and the early Muslims spent the first 13 years in Mecca. All what we learned from the Quran, who is Allah? It's a pity, brothers and sisters in Islam, that you come into this world and leave without possessing the knowledge of whom you worship. Wallahi, if you want to enter the paradise in this world, know who you worship, know your creator, know Allah, get to know him by reflecting upon what he created, that's one way you can do it, or by studying the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran and the sound authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and understand it the way that our righteous predecessors, the first three virtuous generations understood it. So Aisha radiallahu anha says, the first things which were revealed from the Quran in Mecca were who is Allah and what do you get if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you commit yourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get Jannah, paradise, the description of paradise. And what happens if you don't? The description of hell, the consequences of not submitting, of not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all they focused on in Mecca because the Quran taught them that. But when they moved to Medina, the commands 
the rulings started coming one after another. And this is how they found themselves totally submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not even receive Rather, they ask the Prophet وسلم, about more things that they can do. Imagine this. We know that intoxicants, liquors, were made unlawful upon the Muslims in three or four stages. Imagine before the revelation of the final stage, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who were nourished by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who studied the belief system, the aqeedah. They actually asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about intoxicants. Yas'alunaka anil khamri wal maysir يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر قل فيهما إثم كبير ومنافع للناس. They ask you, O oh Muhammad, صلى الله عليه وسلم, about intoxicants, about gambling. They want to know. We got a uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه used to make this dua. O oh Allah, bring down a revelation, a criterion. Once it comes to drinking, brothers and sisters in Islam, when the verses in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the final revelation in Surah Al-Ma'idah, which made intoxicants finally unlawful, were revealed. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ إنما الخمر والميسر والأنصاب والأزلام رجس من عمل الشيطان فاجتنبوه فاجتنبوه لعلكم تفلحون. Oh, ye who believe intoxicants, gambling, and other things are from the work of Satan, stop it. Brothers and sisters in Islam, before I show you how the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who had that foundation, the aqeedah in place, responded to, responded to this command. I want to share with you a piece of history. In the United States of America, hundred years ago, almost, more or less. Actually, they wanted to stop people from drinking. Subhanallah. They knew that intoxicants are harmful to the health, to the wealth, causes death. A lot of the death in the United States of America are caused by car accident. And guess who was driving? people who are drunk. So they said, you know what, the, the MPs, the members of the Congress or whatever they call themselves there, the congressmen and, and the senates, the senators, they said, you know what, let's just ban, al uh, ban alcohol, let's just make it unlawful. And they put together a campaign to stop people from drinking. It's bad for you, they spent a lot of money the question, was their initiative successful? No, it didn't work. Why? For what? For what? Compare this with Hadith Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu an and the Hadith in Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari. Anas narrates, كنت ساق القوم. I was serving a group of Muslims at the house of my uncle Abu Talha. 
رضي الله عنه the husband of Anas's mother Umm Sulaym رضي الله عن Umm Sulaym a woman out of this world this is of course before the final revelation which I quoted earlier was revealed it was permissible then to drink away from the times of the Salah when this verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah was revealed telling the Muslims no more drinking no more alcohol the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam sent a caller to tour the streets of Medina to let the Muslims know Inna Allah Qad Harram Al Khamr Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made it has made intoxicants unlawful you know why I'm smiling you know why I'm laughing because some of them Anna says Anna said they had the cup right here they're about to take a sip right here the glass of wine when they heard the caller they throw it away why exalting the commander wanting the reward Jannah afraid of the punishment hell that's why they did it this is the motive this is the incentive glorifying and exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he commands you to do something because you understand that he is your maker he is your creator he's the one who made you he knows what is good for you and he knows what is bad for you that is why he sent down to the messengers the curriculum that can make your life a good life that can make your life a beautiful life happy life seekers of happiness Allah sent down the manual that can make you happy not only in this world but to be successful in the next life again this is just a simple example to show you why the companions of the Prophet وسلم, right away in Qadu adhered to the commands because aqeedah matters because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started teaching them the aqeedah the belief system before anything else shall I give you another example how many of our sisters these days we love you all for the sake of Allah you are our mothers, our daughters, our sisters. We care. And we say this with respect. In no way we wish harm or wish to ridicule you. But how many of our sisters, when she is asked to wear the hijab, not the headscarf, no, the hijab, the concept of the hijab, modesty baggy doesn't print out the body i'm not talking about a pants and a scarf no hijab what would they say oh let me get married first uh, don't we hear that again in no way i'm ridiculing my sisters in no way but no let me just enjoy my youth first but imagine this when this verse was revealed in Surah Al-Ahzab Ya ayyuha al-nabiyu qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisai al-mu'minina yudinina alayhin yudinina alayhin min jalabi bihin ذلك أدنى أن يعرفن فلا يؤذين وكان الله غفورا رحيما. O Prophet of Allah, 
command your daughters, your wives, and the believing sisters, the believing women, to cover their chests. Brothers and sisters in Islam, fi Sahih al-Bukhari, I'm just comparing why the Sahaba, the companions, whether male or female, this incident here, we're talking about female companions, why they immediately adhered to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were not hesitant. They did not wait. They did not say, let me think about it. Immediate submission. Immediate conviction. Immediate commitment. Because the aqidah mattered. The belief system mattered. They understood the command is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is to be exalted, is to be obeyed with love and fear and hope. That is why they never hesitated. When this verse was revealed in Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, Aisha radiallahu anha tells us, رحم الله نساء المهاجرين الأول. May Allah subhanahu wa taala have mercy on the wives, the female companions of the first generation of the immigrants. As soon as, as soon as this verse was revealed, they tore garments which they had around their waist. And they covered immediately, brothers and sisters in Islam. Why again? Because the foundation was there. Are you with me? I think you are. That's why aqidah matters. And that's why we got to start from the companion started. And we got to start teaching the ummah what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started with. I want to let you know that in my uh, second segment, inshallah, I will be taking your phone calls. Hopefully you can call us with your questions. But again, I kindly request you to focus on the subject of aqidah, on the theme of the show. MashaAllah, Sheikh uh, Dr. Muhammad Salah is out there for your fiqh questions. Please, uh, the phone numbers will be shown in the screen, inshallah, shortly. But I want to give you one last example in the minute I still have before the break. You know there is a masjid in Medina called the Masjid of the Two Qiblas. A masjid with two Qiblas. With two Qiblas. You know why it was called this way? We know that when the Muslims arrived Medina, they were praying toward Jerusalem for 17 months almost, more or less. When the Qibla changed later on to Mecca, the Prophet وسلم, sent a caller also across Medina to notify the Muslims of the change of the direction of Salah to be towards Mecca. Imagine the caller arrived this masjid in Medina at the time of Asr, when Muslims were praying Asr already facing Jerusalem and when the caller said that the Qibla has changed and now it's time to pray towards Mecca, they swerved. That's why the Masjid is called the Masjid of the two Qiblas. Why? Adherence, submission, conviction. Brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, I will take a short break and I will be right back to take your calls, questions. Till then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear viewers. Brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to Aqidah Matters. 
let's start from where they started, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's learn the belief system. Let's learn who Allah is, who are the angels, the books, the messengers. Let's learn about Al-Qadr. Let's learn about the day of resurrection, talking about death, talking about minor and major signs of the day of resurrection, talking about the day of judgment and the scenes of the day of judgment. All of these are subjects of Aqidah matter. It's a long journey. I, ho I hope you're able to stay with me and learn. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Aqidah matters also once it comes to your understanding of the Quran. By the way, a question that you should ask, was the name Aqidah mentioned in the Quran? The answer, not exactly, but it was referred to by another name, and the name was Iman. And that was mentioned in a verse towards the end of Surah Al-Shura, the verse before last actually, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Addressing the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِّنْ أَمْرِنَا مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانِ مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانِ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And thus, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we sent you our Holy Spirit, Jibreel alayhi salam, to let you know about the books, and about the Iman, about faith, belief system, Aqeedah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, there is a relationship between the book, the Quran, and the Aqeedah. If you want to enjoy the Quran, if you want to understand the Quran, if you want the Quran to increase your faith, learn the Aqeedah. And this is what a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whose name is Jundub Ibn Abdullah al-Bajali, the brother of Jarir, has said actually, he said the following, تعلمنا الإيمان We learned Iman, faith, the belief system. ثُمَّ تَعَلَّمْنَا الْقُرْآنِ Then we learned the Qur'an. Imagine, you learned the foundation and then you learned the Qur'an. What happened? And this increased us in faith, increased our commitment to the religion of Islam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah I will be taking your phone calls from now on until the end of the show tonight. Uh, the phone numbers are shown on the screen. Uh, if you're calling from the United States, so I gotta alert you that you gotta call 01120. Uh, but of course, if you're calling from other parts of the world, uh, then 002, uh, and the numbers are shown on the screen, bi'idnillahi uh, ta'ala, for you. Brothers and sisters in Islam, as I wait for your, uh, patiently for your phone calls, uh, ta'ala, I wanted to at least define what Aqeedah is for you. Uh, but I, I, I really did not want this to turn into academic. I want this to be simple, easy to grasp, easy to understand by everyone who is watching me. But I will take two to three minutes, turn academic, and then I will come back to that state of mind which I'm having. 
I'm trying to talk to all of you. We're not trying to turn this into a classroom here. We're trying to learn our religion in a simple way because our religion is very simple. But very quickly, when the scholars want to define a word in our religion, they normally define it through the linguistic origin of the word, where the word derives from. And then they define it technically, how the word is used in the religion. I'll give you an example, very simple word that you all know, as salah. What is the linguistic definition of the word as salah? It's not bowing down and prostrating. No. As salah means dua. The salah derives from supplicating, invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True. That's how we understand a verse in Surah at tawbah خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ Take from their wealth the 2.5%, the charity. This will purify them. And salli alayhim, make salah upon them, make salah for them, meaning make dua for them. And this is the habit of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when somebody would bring to him a sadaqah, he would make dua. But the technical definition of the word salah is not that. It's the salah which we pray, we observe, which starts with takbir, Allahu Akbar, and ends with taslim. That's the technical definition of the word salah. Likewise, aqidah. The linguistic, the linguistic definition of the word aqidah, pay attention to this, derives from a word called uqdah. Not, K-N-O-T, not. You know when you bring a rope and you tie the rope and pull, you create a knot. So the word aqidah actually derives from the word uqdah in Arabic, which is not in English. And that is why the business transaction contract the selling and buying contract is called aqt because it's settled. The marriage contract is called aqt because it's settled. So linguistically, the word aqidah means anything which is settled, done, firmly fixed. You don't question it again. You don't question it again. Uh, we have uh, uh, our first uh, caller, Um Maryam from Kenya. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister Um Maryam. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. Uh, welcome Sheikh, to I have a question. Welcome to the show. You're our first caller <laughs> on, yeah. on Aqidah Matters. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, Sheikh. Okay, in Surah Al Kahf, uh, there's a servant of. Um, uh, Prophet Musa, he forgot to tell uh, Prophet Musa about the fish that went into the ocean. And he said that he forgot to tell him and Shaitan made, me, made him forget. Does that mean that now whenever we forget something or uh, anything bad happens is from Shaitan? And it's not by Qadr of Allah? And that's my question. So basically you're asking about Prophet Musa alayhi salam mentioning Qadr in his story with uh, Al-Khidr alayhi salam about the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, about the fish, uh, the, the servant of Prophet Musa. Prophet All right. He told the Prophet Musa about the fish that went into the sea. All right. And he said that shaitan made him forget. Right. Now, does that mean that uh, when I forget about uh, Salah or... Uh, Anything like that, that it's from Shaitan? Jazakallah khairan, Um Maryam. That's a very good question, mashallah. 
So Sister Um Maryam uh, is bringing up uh, the story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam which was mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf with Nabiullah Al-Khidr. This is the consensus. I'm, I'm going to go with that. That uh, Prophet Al-Khidr was a prophet as well. Uh, when he was given a sign that uh, he would carry a fish in a basket with him and the moment that he forgets or the moment that he loses that fish is the place where he is supposed to meet with Al-Khidr. Prophet Musa salam traveled from Egypt. Now the essence of the question of Umm Maryam Shaitan is the one who made Prophet Musa salam forgets or uh, the one who was traveling with Prophet Musa to be accurate. وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ أَذْكُرَهُ Was that the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah in our Aqeedah Matters series will cover the subject of al-qadr in details. The pre-ordainment of things. But in general, nothing which we do except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has one, knew it, two, wrote it, three, willed it, four, created us to do it. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow Satan to make us forget certain things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to forget. I know this may be confusing, but when we come to the subject of Al-Qadr, you're going to enjoy this, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in brief, yes, when we forget good things, it's from shaitan. That is why we need to seek refuge with shaitan all the time, Sister Um Maryam. We have another caller. MashaAllah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, this voice is so... Uh, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan, are you Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan? Ayyuh, naam. Sheikhna, Sheikhna, wallahi, I miss you so, so much, Sheikhna, wallahi. How, how are you doing? Wallahi, me too. Wallahi, me. I, I love, love you for you the sake you of Allah, Allah Sheikh Ibrahim. I love, I love you for the sake of Allah, and, and we love you here. And, and uh, you know, I was uh, talking a minute ago uh, about uh, how the aqidah is subservient to the Quran. Uh, the, I shared with the viewers actually the statement of uh, Jundub uh, ibn Abdullah al-Bajali when he said, we learned Iman, we learned faith, the belief system, and we learned the Quran. And uh, that is why the Quran increased our faith and increased our commitment and conviction uh, to the religion. Uh, before I, I get into the subject of Aqeedah and the Quran, Sheikh Ibrahim, can you let us know where you are? Unless if you want to keep this as a secret. Uh, I'm sure no, that, uh, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan, brothers and sisters in Islam, is the host of Quran in depth. We enjoy watching his show all the time. Go ahead, Sheikh. Allah alhamdulillah, I just wanted to congratulate you, mashallah, for this, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a source of benefit to the whole world, inshallah ta'ala, with this great subject. We are so much in Ameen. need uh, of matters of aqidah. That's the foundation of all means of goodness. And really what we see all over the world with the situations of the Muslims, uh, without exaggeration, we can clearly say, and of course, mashallah, the benefit has come from you, uh, yes. may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, is that because of some problems and deficiencies in matters of aqidah. No. Uh, because once we have the, the sound aqidah, the sound understanding of matters of belief, I think then by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, things will be easy for us, inshallah ta'ala. I'm in the state now, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, bring us all together in means of goodness. I mean, and I mean. Uh, for people, inshallah, to benefit from your knowledge, inshallah. I mean, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim, um, can you shed some more light, please, on the relationship between uh, how the, the, the knowledge of Aqeedah would, would lead to a better understanding of the Quran uh, and a better commitment and conviction to the religion uh, to the viewers? Jazakallah khaira. Allah Well, and of course, we learn from you, inshallah. Ta'ala. <laughs> But uh, as uh, everyone knows that matters of belief means that when we believe that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger, then uh, this is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us to understand his words. And it's how sim simple is matters of belief that uh, it's mandatory for every Muslim to believe in 
because it's always referred to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The only one that we worship is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only way that we get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes is through the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why when uh, the ulama, they talk about matters of al-iman and how it's not just a belief in the heart, but it's the belief and the speech of the tongue and the actions and so on. Uh, and to uh, to increase the matters of al-iman, one of the ways uh, in general is to uh, ponder over the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Sa'di rahimahullah in his book of Samarat uh, al-Iman or the tree of al-Iman, he said this, that for us to uh, implement the Iman in our life, we should have uh, the understanding in general and specific. In general is to ponder over uh, the two signs of Allah, the religious sign, the, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, and the second one is to reflect upon the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how to understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to with matters of proper belief, you will understand how to understand the Qur'an, how to implement the Qur'an and uh, and to follow the way of the Prophet Jazakallah khair and Sheikh Ibrahim, we, uh, we look forward to, uh, to seeing you. Uh, but before you go, Sheikh, uh, can you please uh, just give us an idea uh, of the uh, importance of, of, of the, uh, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Muslims in general. Um, to learn the aqidah uh, and the relevance of this to the current situation of the Muslims. Uh, like you mentioned, and I, I, I enjoy this so much, what you said, uh, that the problem that we have is a lot of the Muslims are not aware of the foundation of the religion, which is um, the belief system, the, the aqidah. And that's why uh, they end up saying things, uh, they, they end up actually saying things that uh, could actually take them out of the fold of Islam. but. Uh, uh, we know that they are saying these things because they just don't know. And, and it, it's time to teach our ummah um, the belief system bi uh, ta'ala. Can you just shed more light on, on, on the situation of the ummah at large, uh, whether in, in the Muslim world in particular or overseas, uh, and, and, uh, and how can this change by studying the uh, belief system and, and, and the correct aqidah? <laughs> Actually, the situations of the Muslims, I think it's very obvious to every Muslim, and we always talk, talk about how uh, our situation is and how can we fix this weakness and the, and the deficiencies that we have. And alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, had saved this pure religion for us. And uh, for any nation, they cannot go back and see how uh, to trace how things were in their messengers of Allah, except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We can go back and see how the deen was implemented at this time and we see clearly, practically, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory and aided them when they applied the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to be precise, Sheikh uh, Karim, like many people, even here in the West, they look into the matters of Aqidah as, for example, the six pillars of Al-Islam or, or uh, six pillars of Al-Iman or the five pillars of Al-Islam in some general terms like this. Some beliefs and they teach the children, we believe in Allah and the angels and the books and so on. And that's it. And once you have it, then we, we close the books of Aqidah and then we deal with something else. And this is a misunderstanding. The Aqidah, matters of belief, affects our actions and our manners and everything. Part of our Aqidah is in anything that we do, in our belief, that we do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means we get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should know him with his names and attributes and so on. And we have to follow the way of the Prophet والسلام, So the Aqidah of the Muslim, that what I'm doing now is to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my ability, this is the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him. So then our actions will be accordingly and our speech and so on. So aqidah is in everything that we do. Even when a person wants to pray the sunnah prayer, he do it based on aqidah. The aqidah is that he believes that this is a recommended act. And if, uh, yes, if he doesn't do it, there's no sin. But he do it seeking the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. If the aqidah is distorted, he doesn't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or having, as uh, mashallah, you said that some people say words, uh, that the words by itself is words of kufr and disbelief because of the lack of knowledge and so on. And how one word can take the person into the hellfire 70 years as the Prophet alayhi salatu So uh, people would never learn the aqidah based on their desires or, or their cultures or just the way they think. They have to be patient to learn it. And we have to learn it, as you mentioned the other, that we, we learned Al-Iman, and then we learned the Qur'an. So we have to be patient to learn first Al-Iman and matters of belief, so that we would submit ourselves. We have a problem in submission. People do not have this submission to the orders of Allah and to the Qur'an. 
because of the deficiency in the aqidah. Once we learn the aqidah and the belief, then the sub- submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes the most joyful thing in one's life. It's so true. To Allah wa ta'ala. No. So true, Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the three individuals, La ana a'lamukum billah wa ashaddukum lahu khashya. I'm the most knowledgeable amongst you of who Allah is, and that led me to have the khashya, the fear mixed with love. And the verse in Surah Fatir, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Indeed, those who have the khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the most knowledgeable of Allah. What a, cl- what a beautiful ending to the first show of Aqidah Matters. Brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, every Monday and Wednesday, inshallah, uh, 6 o'clock, Mecca time, 5 o'clock, Cairo time, I believe it's noon, 12 noon, uh, Eastern Standard Time, uh, inshallah, uh, I will be here, bi ta'ala, by the grace, by the leave, by the permission of Allah to begin talking about Aqidah matters. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Till our next show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Deep in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain. Deep in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God's creation. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. He made us different nation, and there's no differentiation. He made us different nation, and there's no differentiation. If you're black, if you're white, we are all God creation. If you're black, if you're white, we are all God creation. Deep in the deepest ocean, high on the highest mountain, in the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation.